Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday Tech Talks with Terry. So today we have Miss Heather Witherden in the studio today, or rather in the tub. And uh, she is also known as the Defiant Scribbler and you can find her online. I will try to remember to link your blog post. If I remember, I never do. So right. you can feel free to put it in the comments if you want. <laughs> um, and what we're gonna talk about today is about women in arts and uh, kind of your, your um, participation in that uh, field yourself. So tell us a little bit about yourself and why you feel that women in arts is very important. Well, um, my name's Heather and I came to comedy a little later than some people, although there are some of the famous comedians also started in their 30s and 40s. So um, yeah, I was a stay-at-home mom and for the longest time, I just wrote letters. I moved around the country, so I used to write people letters, and then they would say, your letters are so funny. Your Christmas <laughs> letter is the best letter. You're the <clears> only <throat> one that tells the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is where comedy is usually rooted in. Is yeah, the yeah. stuff The stuff that everyone's thinking, but nobody says. Exactly. This year's <laughs> Christmas letter is just going to be a printout of all my search history. So enjoy that. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> do you <laughs> like do you post your Christmas letter on your blog? Uh I haven't, but you know what? That's, that's a, really a good, good idea. idea. Yeah. I should so follow that. yeah. Should follow in my friend's footsteps. You know, oh, does Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Dr. Rachel Summer. Oh, she just okay. moved to Australia, so we Winnipeg has has lost her unless she's like all the other comedians that move away and then they just continually come back for gigs and you're like, Oh, you never left. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So you do, you literally do everything. I remember uh, when I first found you, we were, became friends on Facebook first. I think that's what happened. I don't know how. Because we had never met in person, but then it was like a friend request. So I'm like, sure, let's hang out on Facebook. And then I met you at an Etsy sale in right. person. That was the first time. But I remember always uh, seeing your posts, like you had posted you doing like couples yoga or like you would try things all the time. And I thought that was really awesome that you yeah. weren't afraid. Um, and I think that's a big thing that holds people back from trying new things. Um, so tell us about your stand-up comedy because that obviously would scare the shit out of me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stand-up comedy is probably the scariest. And you know how you know it's the scariest? It's because I'm not doing it that much right now. <laughs> it is the scariest. Only because, well, I mean, you're up there by yourself. It took me a while to realize that you need to drop a little bit of a curtain because my stand-up is very much like, hey, this is about me. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, they write material about other things other than themselves. I'm like... Oh, but this is my opportunity to be a total narcissist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and free therapy, yeah. you know, with a two-drink minimum. There you uh, go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I do do a lot of things. Um, some people might say that's adventurous, and some people might say no boundaries. So, you know, one uh, of those. That's awesome. So your uh, involvement with the arts community here in Winnipeg is quite extensive, yes? Well, yes, and that's thanks to other people reaching out, like how that all started. Like this weekend will be, I think, my fifth appearance in Girls, Girls, Girls. Awesome, yeah. which I want to get a neon sign for that. So yeah. if anybody has a hookup with a neon sign yeah. factory, feel free to let me know <laughs> or send me a free sign. That'd be I great. follow a really good account on Instagram oh. that does nothing but... Neon signs? Well, she photographs... Oh, photographs them. So not making I was like, I just get a picture of a sign. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I saw there's the Neon Factory or something down yeah, on Main Street. Factory, and yeah. I was like, oh, maybe. I could make you one maybe. more. I bet you could find one. But yeah. Anyways, so, go on. Just find Back to you. Place Back to you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I was obviously new at stand-up. I had been doing some stuff at the King's Head, which still happens. Tuesday night comedy at the King's Head. Uh, I think it's called Comedy Nights now. So somebody had seen me there and that year girls 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 theme was men okay and uh so they said we saw you do comedy we think you're good for our show <laughs> i said we'll do <laughs> so that was kind of my first time being exposed to an audience that was specifically there to see a show featuring women yeah and uh it was such a great like not only were the 
crowd supportive, but like everybody that was working on the show was so supportive. Okay, cool. It was like my first, like, here's a professional theater. Here's yeah. professional people working behind the scenes to create the show, producers, lighting. The whole the shebang. The whole shebang. And I went, ah, oh, this isn't the corner of a bar. <laughs> I like this With place. like one spotlight in yeah. your eye. And yeah. like some guy passed out on the counter. Yeah, because awesome. you know, you got that influence of like other, you know, people with a theatrical background. Yeah. And that led to, you know, being picked up for Fringe projects, Kim Zaglinski, who is a big, um, you know, Fringe performer and veteran, you know, and, you know, everybody that's moving along to their own goals, I find, you know, they, it's just been very inclusive. So, cool. you know, if they found a way that they might think I fit in, yeah, then they've called me, which is great. Awesome. So, like this stuff. Like, like this stuff. I love this stuff. I know, it's really good, right? Yeah. I was like, best Kijiji by the size. world. <laughs> it's in everybody's size. That's why yeah. I like it. I'm like, oh, I could swim. Yeah, one size. I could fit turn on. around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I do flips in there. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so, about, how do you feel about, because the comedy sector, there's actually a, a documentary, I believe, on Netflix about women in comedy, and um, it's not very positive, actually, um, oh. women in comedy. Like, like it showcases that many people are like, oh, I don't like women comics, or things like that. Like, how do you react to that kind of, um, I guess, public reaction? To- uh, part of me wants to defend that, and then part of me wants to say, hey, that's fair. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, like yeah. really, if you want to be equal, yeah, just be equal. Some people are not going to like you. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Whether or not they like you because you're a woman, yeah, you know, that's on them. Yeah, right? that makes sense. Because yeah. I can understand not, you know, like I don't like all male comedians. Yeah, I don't like assholes with racist puppets. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Is is there that? I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't go by the name asshole. But I won't say his actual <laughs> A- name. Asshole puppetry. That's not not as <laughs> yeah, comedic to you know, it. Yeah, there's so much perception in comedy. Like some some people might say, oh, well, you know, maybe Heather should write some jokes that aren't about her her family. It's like, oh, she has a family. I'm like, yeah, but that's what you know, so that's what you do. Well, kind of. Yeah, yeah. and you know, so if I was, you know a super, super political person, or if I was, you know, I don't know, people tend to bring their own experiences into it, whether that's what they write about or not. Yeah. You know. Okay. I could probably expand myself. Yeah? Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what what you had touched upon in that it's free therapy for you to get up in front of people and talk about your family or things that you're going through, but spin it in obviously a a funny or positive way, because everybody goes through shit. Oh, sure. And I mean, I see a lot of well, I don't want to generalize, but like, you know, um, female comics that are younger than me talking about some of the social expectations that we've had for women for years and years, you know, just that, you know, is it traditional to get married? Is it traditional to have children? Um, bringing up some of those things. Now, I am married and yeah. I do have children. Uh, so, you know, I feel it's fair to talk about um But then again, it's weird to be a mom and talk because now, you know, I've reached that point of, you know, like all those moms on Instagram that are putting their kids up. Yeah. uh, Eventually your kids are going to say no. Yeah. And then, boy, you're turned out as being kind of a jerk. (laughs) But that being said, you said uh, (laughs) your kids are also hilarious as well in their own right. Yeah, so they they can get their own Twitter account. You get your own followers. That's what I'm saying. Stupid kids. Yeah, exactly. Get get your own people. Yeah, no, they are hilarious. My son, during the election the other night, he said, well, because he saw how things were going, I can already smell the street brothels. Yeah, that was in reference. Oh, I saw that, and I was like, "Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah." Yeah. And that's from a sixteen-year-old boy. So, um, at least he's involved in politics. You know, we and we know we don't have to have the talk. Because he yeah. knows what a brothel is. Because he knows about brothels. Yeah. I always said if they, I would be a great madam, like for yeah. a bro- if they, they legalize brothels. Because yeah. I was like, it's safe. My girls would be clean. Like yeah. it would be a legit thing. And I think I, I can talk about I'm this because the story is out of the courts now. But I actually did know the the Winnipeg uh, madam. Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. I don't know. I think it's great. Nails done together. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, and uh, she would only get one hand done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> true story. <laughs> true, true story. Well, well, so I shouldn't say that. She will only get ex nail extensions on oh, one side. Okay. Other side, very short. <laughs> Need for insertion. And <laughs> I'm not joking. I, I learned a lot. Yeah. She loaned me costume stuff. Serious? Yeah, and her husband. No, just kidding. And her husband. <laughs> Heather's hilarious. So, but you know, it. like that's how weird things happen, right? Like if you do not say no to, uh, and you go, oh my god, I think, I think she might, oh my god, Becky, she's a <laughs> prostitute. Um, yeah, no, I mean, if you say, who are you? What do you do? What are you about? And then you never just, know. Well, who you're sitting you next to people. at the nail salon. You meet people, and, yeah. and uh, you know, so. It was, I wouldn't, it wasn't through her, yeah. but she was, um, I ended up being the MC at the tab Taboo show. Oh, okay, And cool. they were, the organizers were kind of funny because, you know, I am outgoing, but I'm not, I don't know, I don't think I'm wild. I mean, if you saw me walking <laughs> down the street, people don't go, oh, you know, yeah. really, like. You're scandalous. I'm just, <laughs> a lady. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, but I think that's part of the charm, you know what I mean? Because some, yeah. some of the stuff you post, obviously, yeah. is erotic or things like that. And then people are like, whoa, whoa, but you're a mom. You can't do that. I and I think that's why people like it. Because I enjoy you're, that. you're saying exactly what everybody else is thinking. Yes. Which is, and I feel like, uh, I know, well, through, you know, having some friends doing yoga and things like that, uh, my favorite new word is allow. What are you going to allow? And, uh, you know, when you allow things, it's interesting what happens. Yeah. Right? So, you know, like I allowed certain people in my life or I allowed certain experiences in my life. And then, you know, new things come to you. But if you block them all the time, then like you're, improv. you're stuck. Well, I was going to say that I was going to bring that up actually about improv. Yeah. improv. What do you say? Yoga with that? improv. Yoga improv. There you go. <laughs> Do this. Okay. <laughs> Actually, did you watch the last Amazing Race Canada? Um, Where they go? They go to India and they have to do yoga. Couples yoga. Oh, okay. I heard about it, but I so, anyways, I made my husband and I do the like the poses. Okay. And we almost broke ourselves a few times. Yeah. But I did find one that like cracks my back perfectly, and it was amazing. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's something I would actually try more of, like couple of yoga. I was like, I hate yoga, but I think doing it with somebody else and making it funny would be. A good yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, that was my always my challenge in couple yoga. Just stop laughing. Yeah, right. But yeah. then there's laughter yoga, so yeah, you could combine like all the yogas and just have one hot, sweaty, laughing <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know what? It's true because uh, even though I thought, oh, I can do yoga, but now you're being asked to do things that are, you know slightly beyond like and you have to trust someone and yeah. that other person has to trust you yeah um you know and there were things and I thought I don't know my husband doesn't like watch me do yoga when I go to my classes so he's not you know he doesn't know I can do this you know <laughs> look where my leg goes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah or just you know like the fact that I weigh more than my husband yeah right and some of them were you know, some of the poses meant that, yeah, I'm I'm now using him as as a base for yeah. my yoga pose, and he's gonna know exactly how much I weigh. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I think he does. He sees me every day, but yeah, you know, um, I, I was I was the only one that felt bad. He said, "It's good. It's good. Just do it." Oh, good. Don't even worry about that's, it. And I that's can, usually how women are. Yeah, I it's know. Like, I know, and it's kind of. Funny. Oh, but you're looking at me weird. Oh, yeah. Okay, relax. Yeah. You know what? Fine. Hello. They always look weird. <laughs> I was like, that's why I just make fun of myself. So, uh, what's next for you? You said you are part of the girls, girls, girls coming up. When this airs, it'll be in like two weeks from now. So oh, it'll okay. be over so by girls, then for girls, this girls one. Will be in the past. Yeah, but yeah. Things coming up. I'm going. Um... Any more burlesque shows? Ah. Um... You know what? I think there seems supposed to be something in the works. Oh. Yeah, that was very successful. That was another thing I decided to allow because, as you know, that um, was a mixed uh, show. Like it was, I don't want to say mixed communities. I guess we get a little cliquish in our little groups. <laughs> um, but their burlesque show featured professional exotic dancers. Okay, cool. You know, and I assume you're talking about yourself. <laughs> when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and they didn't really know me other than I said, I have emceed burlesque shows before. 
and I enjoy doing it and you know this is what I do if you're interested in having me then great. yeah and they said sure so we had a little meeting so that's the day I say I had lunch with strippers and people <laughs> go what <laughs> yeah. anyway I mean they they call themselves strippers so I don't know if there's a a political that's a, yeah, I'm saying the wrong uh, things. But you know, they were amazing and professional performers and they yeah. also had a lot of fun with it. And for them, this is a new venue for them as yeah. well to, you know, be performing in a theater versus some little I shouldn't say divey place. No, but just different it's than what they're used to. Environment, yeah. Different environment, different and different kind of atmosphere yeah. too. Like your crowd would I would assume be slightly different than their traditional crowd that they would perform for. Maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming, you know, and uh, so, you know, it's neat for them to be able to, you know, get the money after the show, not from their underwear. <laughs> Truth. Well, which they might get afterwards too, depending where they you know, sometimes you wake up. I was gonna say, sometimes you wake up and you're like, "What? Where did that loony come from?" No, you're like, "Oh, popcorn. that was in my bra." That's popcorn. Right. popcorn. That's what I eat. Nice. So, uh, so and Fringe Fest. So, well, obviously, you were very active in the Fringe Fest yeah. um, this last year. What? Because uh, I did photography for you guys for your Chub Rub yeah. productions two years ago. Two years ago. And this year, what did you guys do for your production? Well, I again uh, was interested in clowning. <laughs> One thing leads to another, and I mean, none of these things, oddly, are that separated from each other. But you meet little different groups of people. So this, I had met. A woman that was teaching clowning or I was given her name and kept in contact with her kind of never made it to her actual classes at MTYP yeah um, Sue Proctor but she's an older lady and she has been teaching clowning she's been a clown for th over 30 years can so, you imagine that on your resume like how amazing and she would that too, be right and she never expected that she was going to be a clown and when people tell me that their life has turned out different than they expected that's generally somebody that I want to be yeah. around because to me that says that they you're, bu you're bucking tradition to yeah. find your passion or they surprised themselves or they let themselves be surprised yeah they you know, allowed it yes I got a very good friend and you know from a very early age you know how some jobs or some professions are almost like handed down through the family oh yes I feel like it's like that for people that are children of teachers yeah and teaching is you know obviously a great you know profession but I don't know if it's necessarily for every person mm -hmm. and uh, she did actually become a teacher but I think she always felt like she wanted to do something else as well and yeah. so she has explored other things which I think is really really good and she's found a way to teach and do those things and that's awesome. I, I like that I like it when I hear people finding ways to make their life work for them. Yeah, exactly. It's not very black and white. <laughs> no, exactly. That's why um, I was in a conference on Monday, and that's why I said I'm the kind of person that will jump off the cliff, grow with my wings on the way down, and figure shit out. Yeah. Whereas that is not for everyone, as I sat across from my sister-in-law and sister, who are like, no, no, research first, yeah. then do your Planners. homework and plan, and da-da-da. And I was like, no. But we're all entrepreneurs, so it's just, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how you get there, just as long as you get there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh... Yeah, we even experienced that in my house because, you know, my my husband, he's been doing the same thing. Well, I shouldn't say he's been doing the same thing, but, you know, yeah. he's been in the same career on this path. And he's gotten to do a lot of different things, but I think every once in a while he thinks about, you know, oh, I remember the time I was in the theatrical production. Okay, and so he's also in little theater. parts in shows okay, too, cool. right? And, uh, Oh, look at your eyes light up when you're doing this. <laughs> that's when you know people are super passionate about yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good that you're able to uh, involve him in that world then. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he said, he said, can anyone write a fringe show? And I said, yes, Virginia. Anyone can write a fringe show. Uh, <laughs> some people shouldn't, but yeah. some they do anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know. And anyway. Then you get talked about I should never press. say they shouldn't because no one's voice should be suppressed. True. <laughs> I've heard of some, but anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, so do you have plans for the next coming Fringe Fest? Um, do you guys know? We just you're started in? talking about maybe doing chub rub um, because I don't know if you're familiar with Camry Moore. No. She is 
from Boston. Well, she's from Boston originally. Boston. I think she's living in Montreal now, but she did several shows, and one of the shows that she's toured is called Phone Horn. Well, okay. Yeah, she's she was a phone sex operator. Yeah, and so it was that's why I always said I would be good at that as well. What yeah. the hell? Like sex is yeah. destined for me. You and I. I think let's just drop I know. It, when I get just sick. Drop it down right now. That's when I get sick. Let's just let's just it's open that right up. You know what this voice it. gets you? Yeah, it gets you voices for sleep apnea. And so that's, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's another thing I've done. Done a little <laughs> bit of voiceovers. Which is actually quite funny. I said I would like to do, try that, to yeah. be a voiceover. Because I'm like, I hate the way I look, on, hence why I'm behind this right now and you're in front of it. Um, but because, I don't know, I think it's fun to like be animated and talk a lot. And then yeah. just like, throw my voice onto something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus there's, I don't know, I think I'm good at being directed. That's sexual. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everything I, is yeah. sexual. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, well, speaking of that, so my (laughs) friend, who's a musician, I think actually my little turn into this artistic life came through music. Okay. And uh, I used to play an instrument, and so did this old friend of mine, and she said, oh, what are we missing from our life? And I said, live music. So she, uh, we started going out and hearing bands and musicians, and soon enough we found ourselves, like, you know, following the Winnipeg music scene, and... So one of my friends that's a musician, he said, I've got a friend that does commercials for radio and he's really looking for like, I think you would be perfect. He's looking for like a sassy wife character. (laughs) On it. That's you in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, so I did end up doing these commercials, but it was funny because he has a, he's an entrepreneur. He has his business at his home, uh, just a little recording studio in his basement, you know, next to his kid's toys (laughs) toys <laughs> and uh so he's got you know all his recording equipment and microphones and you just go there and so you know he would call and say you know do you want to come and do we're going to do these commercials and they were actually all for dentists okay yeah dentists that do this uh <laughs> oral appliance for <laughs> sleep apnea yeah and so i said okay So he had these scripts, and he also let me work on the scripts a little bit. So, I mean, some of them I wrote, like, um, if he stops breathing one more time during the night, I'm going to kill him. You know, (laughs) anyway, goofy, but yeah. So they, I would go to his house, and he would say, okay, well, you know, come over after my kids go to bed. And then I'd go to his house, and yeah, his wife's at a meeting. And uh, he would give me a drink. Loosen you know, up for the voice, yeah. and uh, why did I do do this? Cause yeah. It was actually for the voice, and, and it was then, actually a drink. It was actually <laughs> a drink. it was all on the up and up. But you know, somehow I would go out to some man's house, go to his basement, say things the way he wanted me to say them, get paid three hundred dollars, and then be home in an hour and a half. Like, well, that sounds fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you did take tips from the lady of the nail salon. <laughs> You're like, hi, work what you got. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Cool. So, anyways, we were talking about your fringe performance. Oh, well, yeah. Cameron. So, anyway, so Cameron yeah. uh, is in town, and she said, "Are you guys going to do another fatty show?" And I said, "Well, we might if you're here." Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, body positivity is a big thing that you promote, obviously, with the name Chub Rub, which can be construed one of two ways, actually. Because <laughs> uh, once I, I like mentioned it to my mom when I was doing your photos, and she was like. What did you say? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no. It means like where your thighs rub together, like chub rub. You know? She's like, oh, I don't know. Well, then you don't, you don't talk to me <laughs> until you've had chub rub. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah. See, so you are obviously very um, body positive, and just I think positive in general. It's not even body yeah, positive, but not in, not is it exclusive? I'm inclusive? always slow to awareness. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably be on my deathbed and going, oh. You know, yeah. that'll be it. It's over. <laughs> it's, that'll be it. It's I always done. figure things out later. Whenever my kids were going through a phase and then it would be done, and we go, oh. oh. Yeah. You know, okay. so yeah, with the body positivity thing, I basically, people had seen me doing comedy and they said, um, you know, do you want to join our pot- body positivity group? I, I said, sure. And it was a ruse. It was all to, you know, it eventually we, came up with the idea that we would do a fringe show together, yeah. we could do some skits, we could do some, you know, dancing, we could do some comedy, and we can, you know, make a funny show about being fat girls in a world where that's 
sort of okay. Yeah, it's Depending getting it's ask, getting better. It's I getting feel. better. Yeah, and it's not even just body. Po- I mean, and that's what I mean. Like it's it's body just you're just inclusive and, of all the things. Not yeah. even just body, but just positive towards like nothing should hold you back. Basically, is kind of what it says to me. Yeah, like, not your should, body, not you your hold other gender back. stereotype, not your. I like, think it's that body. positive in the force that like it's like we're trying to protect people, but we're just trying to protect people's rights to be themselves yeah 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 and i know that you guys were all about being yourself when you came in for your photo shoot for sure ah uh, yeah there were so many different characters <laughs> in my studio it was awesome i loved it yeah that was a really fun time cool so is there anything else you'd like to touch on before we wrap up here uh maybe just you know my fellow um comedians in town that are doing something cool i think it's november 27th at the oh, Park theater wait chantelle's empowerment empower her oh and paul herman and empowerment empowerment, empowerment. <laughs> yes. yeah uh jessica seaburn's yeah doing it i think yeah, yeah i'm I so excited to see that. That. you know i honestly don't know super tons about it yet I'm, yeah probably wasn't really paying attention ADD uh, <laughs> so um, but yeah it sounds like it's going to be a fun night and okay so this will air before that one good. so yeah. um, I will try to remember to link to it in the comments yeah and if you're that. in some small town in Saskatchewan the weekend before that I think I'm doing a show somewhere oh really yeah. some small town somewhere yeah, I just you know Saskatchewan and picks me up on a Friday night I come home <laughs> on Saturday again super on the up and up yeah it'll be fine just it's okay two hundred dollars one night only there you go yeah. special deal for pretty pretty people <laughs> awesome thank you everyone for listening and we will see you next tuesday bye